So it seems like the SSD inside the base M2 Pro 40 inch is slower than the SSD inside the base M1 Pro 40 inch. So as you can see, we have AJ disk speed open and we're testing a 16 gigabyte file and that is 4K in resolution. And yeah, the old model is significantly faster. And keep in mind, this is the baseline model on both, so 512 gigabyte SSD. Now we're gonna have a bit more look into this to see exactly what's causing this. Is it a single uh, 512 gigabyte SSD that's causing it? But for now, it seems like uh, the base model of the M2 Pro 14 inch is indeed slower significantly than the M1 Pro model. And in this video, we're going to put that to the test to see if it also affects real world usage. We're gonna run some benchmarks and compare the performance between the M2 Pro and M1 Pro and see if it's actually worth getting the M2 Pro over the M1 Pro or maybe if it's worth getting a refurbished M1 Pro model instead. So now let's do a file transfer speed test to see if the internal disk speed uh, is affecting this by any means. So we're going to transfer two folders, 18 gigabytes in total from our external SSD. And the M1 Pro took 26 seconds while the M2 Pro took 20 seconds. So the new model was actually 1.3 times faster. Now that's likely because our SSD doesn't really get to those three gigabyte per second transfer speeds. So the bottleneck here is actually our SSD. Uh, which means that if you are to use a non thermal SSD, you won't really notice any major difference in transfer speeds between the two models as you're not maxing out the SSD. Uh, in that case, the new model might even be faster because of the more powerful chip. Now, we'll see how this lower SSD affects real-world performance, but first, let's move on to some CPU testing. The base M1 Pro has six performance cores and two efficiency cores, whereas the base M2 Pro chip has six performance cores and four efficiency cores. So 10 in total compared to eight in total on the old model. And something interesting to note here is that the M2 Pro chip has a 3.5 GHz clock speed for the single core, and then 3.2 for the rest of the cores, whereas the M1 Pro has 3.2 for the single core and 3 GHz for the rest of the cores. So it would be interesting to see if this higher clock speed affects performance and by how much, and also if those four efficiency cores affect performance over the two on the M1 Pro model. So we've started a test with Cinebench. We ran the whole test for 10 minutes over and over, and the M1 Pro got a score of 9,952, whereas the M2 Pro got 11,648. So that was 17% faster. A pretty good improvement. And then we've also measured the thermals while running a five minute Cinebench run. And in this case, the M1 Pro got to 94 degrees, so it was very, very hot. But then the M2 Pro got even hotter to 102 degrees, that is 8.5% hotter. So it doesn't seem like the cooling system got any improvements with the M2 Pro model. It might be a different story with the M2 Max, as the one is actually considerably heavier, uh, 300 grams heavier than the M1 Pro and the M2 Pro models. Next up, we're going to test Lightroom, more specifically importing loads, 228 images of various resolutions and file types, from different RAWs and TIFFs up to 80 megapixels in size. The M1 Pro took 8 seconds, whereas the M2 Pro took 18 seconds. So yes, the M2 Pro took 2.25 times longer. So indeed, it seems like the slower SSD has indeed affected the Lightroom import time. Then we've applied a bunch of effects and filters to one image and then pasted all of those uh, to all remaining 227 images. And this took 59 seconds on the M1 Pro compared to 1 minute and 5 seconds on the M2 Pro. Which is weird as this doesn't involve the SSD, so I did find it quite strange that it was also slower. We then exported all these modified images in full quality and this took the M1 Pro 9 minutes and 38 seconds, whereas the M2 Pro was finally faster at 6 minutes and 3 seconds, so 1.59 times faster this time. So yeah, major improvement here, the higher clock cores and those two extra efficiency cores did indeed help. Now we're going to try the exact same thing, but this time in compressed quality. So file size set to small. And this time the M1 Pro took 4 minutes and 34 seconds, whereas the M2 Pro uh, took 3 minutes and 23 seconds. So 1.34 times faster. One minute faster, that's a big difference, uh, which will matter even more if you work with even larger projects. So overall, when it came to Lightroom, aside from importing images, everything was actually much faster on the M2 Pro. So. Nice upgrade here. Okay, we have one more CPU test to do, which is 
Blender. So we tested the classroom scene using the Cycle CPU render, and in this case, the M1 Pro took 12 minutes and 12 seconds compared to 7 minutes and 21 seconds on the M2 Pro. So pretty huge difference here, 1.65 times faster on the M2 Pro. I was really surprised here as the only major difference is the higher clock speed and uh, the two extra efficiency cores. Not only that, but if we take a look at the battery drain, the M1 Pro lost 13%, whereas the M2 Pro only lost 4%. So that is 3.25 times less battery life drop on the M2 Pro model. Okay, time to test out the GPU. So on the M1 Pro, this is the bin model, so it has a 14-core GPU compared to the binned M2 Pro model, which comes with a 16-core GPU. And using the Cycles GPU renderer, the M1 Pro took 3 minutes and 49 seconds compared to 2 minutes and 11 seconds. So the M2 Pro was 1.74 times faster. Again, pretty shocking considering that the only difference here uh, would be those two extra GPU cores on the M2 Pro. In terms of the battery drain here, the M1 Pro lost 4% compared to 3% on the M2 Pro. So yeah, very minor difference, uh, which is great to see, considering that we do have those uh, extra GPU cores. And now we're going to test Final Cut Pro with its 15-minute 4K project. This was uh, one of our previous camera comparisons. Quite a demanding timeline with lots of effects and titles. And in this case, the M1 Pro took 16 minutes and 18 seconds, pretty good. Whereas the M2 took 13 minutes and 10 seconds, so 1.23 times faster. The battery life drop was about the same, 18% on the M1 Pro compared to 90% on the M2 Pro. Then we tested out compressor. So we used a 4K 5-minute clip and we converted that from H.265 to ProRes. Yeah, the M1 Pro took 1 minute and 14 seconds compared to 51 seconds on the M2 Pro. So the M2 Pro was 1.45 times faster. Quite a big difference here. Oh, and here, none of them lost any battery life at all. Then we did the same test, but this time with a 6K 6-minute 6 clip uh, from H.265 to ProRes. And this took 2 minutes and 19 seconds on the M1 Pro compared to 1 minute and 33 seconds on the M2 2 Pro, so 1.49 times faster, with the M1 Pro losing 1% battery and the M2 Pro losing nothing. And then we tested out Logic Pro 10. We wanted to see how many tracks you could actually play back on both of these machines. So the M1 Pro was able to play back 118 tracks, so quite impressive, compared to 122 on the M2 Pro. So not a major difference, uh, only four tracks in between. So what about gaming? Well, we started off with World of Warcraft, which is one of the fewest native Apple Silicon games. So we select the resolution of 2560 by 1600 and we max out the graphics as high as they could get. Uh, the M1 Pro got an average of 71.5 frames per second, so very, very impressive, whereas the M2 Pro got 77.5 so 6 frames per second higher. And then we also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So even though this is not a native Apple Silicon game, it does run using Metal, so it is more optimized than the majority of games. And uh, we did the benchmark here uh, at 2560 by 1600. The M1 Pro got 27 frames per second compared to 33 on the M2 Pro. So in conclusion, should you pay $2,000 for the new M2 Pro 14-inch or should you simply just get the M1 Pro refurbished for about $15.39 on the Apple refurbished store? Well, that's pretty much a no-brainer. Just get the M1 Pro refurbished. If you cannot find it refurbished, there are still some great deals on this around on Amazon and different stores. So if you simply tap on the YouTube shoppable cards down below, you can see some of those deals. But if you simply cannot find the previous 14 inch refurbish or any deals at all, then uh, the M2 Pro is a good upgrade. Yes, the SSD is slower, which is a bummer, and it did actually affect real world usage in Lightroom, which was quite disappointing, but everything else was much faster on the M2 Pro model compared to uh, the M1 Pro. The biggest improvement was by far in the GPU department where we saw almost a 2x factor of improvement. Final Cut was also faster, 1.23. We also saw higher frame rates in games and also less battery life drop, especially in CPU tasks such as Blender where the old model lost 13% and the new one only 4%. So yeah, overall, this is a great device, better in almost every single way. We have a very interesting video coming out very soon covering some interesting discoveries on the new model and we'll dig into the whole SSD situation more in that video, as well as more testing on the new Mac Mini and the 16-inch MacBook Pros as well. So definitely stay tuned for those. I'm Daniel, this is Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Sonoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.